much for joining us today. Uh, so my name is Serhat Can. I'm uh, one of the co-founders and CEO of Resmo. So, uh, you know, in, in a very short way, what we are doing is we automatically scan your cloud and SaaS and, you know, uh, collect uh, your resources, make sure that they are secure and compliant um, and give you the ability to, uh, you know, query your resources and set up alerts um, just in case anything goes wrong. So uh, today, uh, Sajuk is our guest and, uh, you know, I'm really happy to have him because he's... Um, one of the best in the field and um, especially like when I have a question about access like anything related to access like he's the expert so uh, again welcome Selçuk. Thank, thank you so much Sel, for your for your kindness and like, like being here is like so good for me because I know you are you guys like working like a lot of things about managing assets on the cloud and maybe in the future on the prem. So yeah, let's happy to be here and share our knowledge together. Uh, awesome. I mean, I'd like to learn a little bit uh, about uh, Mono for MonoSign, um, the product. Uh, yeah. Before we start, that'd be great to give uh, some background to the attendees. Uh, could you, you know, share a bit about your uh, company, your product? For sure, definitely. Like, uh, I'm going to start with my name. So my name is Selçuk. And I am the founder of uh, Monofor and I'm CEO at the moment of the company. So what Monofor do is like, if you have a problem to managing your identities and accesses also, and including privilege too. So we are the guy that, that, that would fix your problem right away and, and make everything work um, together simultaneously and managing your your users' access, making visible them for you, and also doing a governance about all of them. That's the basic explanation. But if if some of you don't know anything about like uh, identity access management, product access management, it's okay because that's why we are we are here right now. I'm muted, so I just yeah. wanted to make sure I don't <laughs> cause you know any problems with the noise. So, um, so exactly. I mean, today we are here to talk about access, identity, and access management. I know uh, if you are not coming from a security background, if you are not coming from IT background, uh, I know there are some folks out there right now, uh, you know, listening to us from the from a, the DevOps background. So, you know, this uh, topic may be um, a new, may be new to them. So uh, let's just start with the basics. I mean, the fundamentals. I think that's important because we need to understand some of the keywords better to be able to, you know, appreciate. Um, uh, so someone else uh, is. Okay. Probably because it's, it's, it's my link. Yeah. Okay. It's my link. Awesome. So let's, I mean, so I, I want to talk about some fundamentals, like, for example, identity and access management. What does actually, you know, I am me? So it's actually like the concept um, starts with like um, the basics of that concept. Sorry, I'm going to just remove another one because they're using my, my URL. That's why. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. So the yeah. identity means uh, like, you know, when we just born from the beginning uh, of the life, we start with something that like being a part of the human and we identify, actually we start to identify ourselves, not just with the name, but but the human itself, like trying to trying to identify ourselves to everyone and recognized by them and making these like visible to them, right? So that's that's the human being. When it starts the life, the life becomes identifying yourself and and being being like visible to everyone in the world, right? So when it comes to the digital side, so it means digital identity, that's what, what we call it. So it means when you when you like create something in the digital side, it's 
it is a part of your identity. You are creating your identity as digital and trying to become as the same person in the digital area. So identity management means actually for, or for especially employees or the workforce, or maybe consumers, means you have a user or account on digitally, and you're using that account on the systems that you are trying to use. This identity means on the digital side. When you want to do something like maybe in a consumer side, let's say you want to buy something from a, a website, so you're creating your account, you are trying to buy something with that account, you're attaching your home address with that account, et cetera, and et cetera. So that's your digital identity for that website. Identity management means the system that helps you to manage your identities in a portal, maybe in a web portal. So it helps you to see every identity in your system that you're, they are using like apps, maybe services or business apps. It doesn't matter what it is. It helps you to manage them all from just one single UI. That's what identity management means, especially for the, for the users from the outside. But the inside is a little bit different, but we are gonna talk about it maybe, maybe in a minute. Yeah, I mean, let's just talk about it. So uh, it's a very fundamental concept. And uh, because that's your gateway to, you know, pretty much everything, sometimes it's it's not enough to have just, you know, access to um, everything uh, in the system that you are accessing. Sometimes you need, you know, um, to have certain permissions. Sometimes you don't. So I think that's where, you know, this, you know, concepts like privileged access management um, um, comes into uh, the play. So uh, can you talk a little bit about that as well? Yeah, sure. So the, the first, I, I talk about identity management, just the identity management, not the access management itself. Access management is a little bit different. Let's say you create your identity and you want to you want to use that identity with, with any system, like any part of that system. Maybe it, it is easy to give an example from the same concept. Let's say you want to, see your orders that you ordered before to like buy something, etc. So, and also let's say you want to access the details of that maybe order, but sometimes you don't have access to access that information, right? So the, the system defines access management means helps you to understand your user about like which is accessing like data itself or any other related services that the system allows you to use. So if you want to manage those things, you need access management. So access management is the part of that identity access management concept together. So at the first, you're creating your identity. Next access management comes and helps you to understand your user's access on any system or the related services of those systems. So privilege is totally different concepts, but I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna try to simplify that too. So let's say you are, actually you have an identity and you are trying to access a building, right? So there's a security guy at the door and I, I want to go back a little bit. So you have that building and let's say you have, 20 different doors that people can come into that building, right? You have 20 different doors. Anyone can go from that door to your building. Do you want that? No, right? You want to, you want to like see which user or which like identity trying to go inside to your building. So identity management means you're creating just one single door and you're, you're just creating a security guy and stand off your door, like entrance and saying that, okay, yeah, you can go into the building and you can't go into the building because of your identity. He knows you. So that's identity management at first, right? So you're in the door and security guy 
saw you and said that, okay, Serhat, yeah, I know you. You can just go into the building, but I'm going to give you an access card, right? You can use that access card and identify yourself. And that access card only can access certain doors or, or certain places in the building. So the second one is the access management because I gave you an identity card and that identity card contains certain access and you can access with those with the, with that identity card so the privilege is kind of different so you're in the building and you're just moving around right and you have a title let's say you have a title i know you and i i said okay sarah you can you can go into the building but you have a different role the, the role comes with your title let's say you are you are the owner of that building so what you can access many places at the same time right because you have access those doors or places or or part of that building so that situation makes you privilege than others what it means only you can use those permissions to access certain places but no one can access any other place that you are doing at the moment it makes you privilege you are you got your privilege because of your title you you are the owner of that building i can enter that building i can access certain places but not as much as you because you are in a different different place it is not role management we don't mix those concepts those are different concepts and another su subject is let's say you are the co-founder of that building and i am the co-founder of that building we have again we have some some accesses but by your role not just your your privilege by your role you can you can access everywhere and by my role i can access everywhere too but i'm creating a privilege just for you and saying that okay sarat you have your own room and i have all on my own room but we have same role again we have same role but i can't go into your room because that's just only privilege to you and i can use my room it's only privilege to me it's not about role. Let's let's say it again. We are in the same role, but different privileges. That's the privilege management. Privilege management stick your user account and makes you to do actions like certain actions just only attached to you, or maybe two people at the same level, and maybe you are and me can just use just one single thing together not the other ones by their role or or any other thing or related information on the system i hope it makes sense yeah so uh, if i understand correctly for example in terms of like the aws language so um yeah. can we think of it as like their roles but they're also attached policies uh sometimes they can change uh, and sometimes you can um you know um not really play the place, but sometimes you just want to give privilege to certain users, but you know, just a period for a period of time. So I guess uh, those type of um, privileges can be time based or you know uh, based on different conditions as well, right? Yes, great, great example by the way. The the privilege comes with some privilege options. The time based mm -hmm. one of them, and also like being watched one of them too. Like like I said before, you have re your role. Okay, I have my role, and I I can like access many system. Just we can access together just many system, but also your privilege makes you accountable too. Actually, should accountable for you. You know what? Because I need to. Oh, not not me. Sorry, the system needs to watch you, what you are doing, and and in which condition, because your privilege can't like you know actually you can't use your privilege by your like own good 
you need to use your privilege by systems on good. So like you can just exceed something or expose some information by your like privilege. So the system need to watch you and report you also to, to like some other, maybe like mm -hmm. users accounts or any, any mm -hmm. system that you need to be tracked by. Like, like a security camera in the building, right? Yeah, yeah uh, definitely. So, I mean, so we talked, um, I think that that touches on the topic of uh, governance, I guess. So I, I, we hear this term IGA, like identity governance and administration. Before yeah. we talk about, um, you know, uh, how identity, you know, securing access relates to your, you know, security program, because that's so fundamental. I want to yeah. just shortly, I mean, touch on that topic as well. Yeah. So like the first, I, I want to start a simple question to you, Sarah. Like, what do you think about, about where, to, where do we start to, to manage an identity or manage an access or manage a privilege? Where do we start? What do you think about that? Let's say uh, I want to control users, something. Like I want to define first, you know, which users I have. Uh, yeah, cool. you know, add them uh, to my environment uh, with, you know, and assign them specific roles. Yeah. So what what do you are, I mean, what you are saying is, like, basically, you are creating a visibility for your system. It means like, okay, like I I want to control something like identities on my system, but at first, I want what is going on. <laughs> in my system the identity access management systems like make it first great visibility for you and also like identify what is going on in your system this is the first job like any uh, identity access management system needs to done right so the next comes management and automation single sign-on, multi-factor authentication, these are concepts, maybe including identity access management. But after that, like after that, and after that, you need to like specify something or like create a workflow for your user's journey. I mean, where they need to like access or request their permissions. And after that, like you said before, governance also comes too. So you create your users, maybe you create your applications, you, you assign some like access to them, but it, it is not like ending there. It's like, it is continuing and continuing and continuing. So if something, if we do something like continuously, we also need to like govern them continuously. So govern means when you create something, you need to follow up the process. You can't just assign a permission to person and you can't just forget it. You, you need to like, like continuously check that permission. If like, do, do they need to still access to them or, or those applications or those systems? Let's give an example from like AWS too. So I create a maybe like S3 bucket, right? So I give an access to you and say that, okay, Serat, I'm giving a full access to you, but for the certain times, and I need you to do some like configuration on my S3. And after that, when you finish your job, just let me know, and I'm gonna close your permission or like resign your permissions, right? So this is a simple case. So what it means is like, I, I made you a privilege for you, right? I, I said like, Okay, just only Serhat can do that configuration and I'm giving the, like privilege, that privilege to, to you. So, but I create that privilege for just maybe like 20 minutes or 25 minutes because you said to me, I can finish that job in, in 15 minutes and I give you a buffer and I said like, okay, 20 minutes in, enough for you. Yeah, so I create, create it and, and I forgot to resign your permission. So that's the problem. You can just use your permission. Maybe you'd leave the company yesterday, but I, I forgot to like, maybe disable your user or disable your permissions. Disa by the way, disabling user, not solve your problem. 
let's say I disable your user, but it's not enough. I need to just resign your old permissions from like all systems. It is not an easy job for, for a person. Let's say you have a company, you are 50 people and you are using 20 different applications. So let's say one user is using maybe 15 applications. You know what you need to like, maybe just remove your user's permission when they leave the company, right? So that's where Iden Access Management comes. So it helps you to like resign like everything from like every system. So the governance do that job continuously and inform you about that. So let's say I create a like workflow for that governance and I'm sending a daily updates of your of your identities and permissions. So I, I sent a report to you and I said to you, okay, Serhat, you're accessing this or maybe your users accessing those things. Are they need to still access those things or, or do you need to like resign their permissions or roles, et cetera? So that's the governance. That's the governance helps you to do that job continuously. Mm -hmm. I mean, thanks a lot for the uh, great examples. It helps to understand it better. Uh, so, uh, folks, I know some of you joined later. So if you have questions, you can just use the Q&A section or just use the chat. And we are monitoring uh, both. And if you, again, like I, I, can, I can just step in and ask the question right away. And if it's not directly relevant to what we are talking about right now, uh, we will definitely answer them until uh, after. Uh, uh before we finish the webinar so we will also upload the webinar on youtube so just in case i mean you have to leave that's also okay um so uh Selçuk, i mean we touched upon some good topics good fundamentals so i want to go a bit faster because we uh passed yes. half the time so yes. um so we we have a schedule but uh so i, I want to just talk about um so building your security program just a bit and then we will mm -hmm. we can continue from there like so to me if you want to do something about security it has to start with identity because uh i mean without a proper identity and access management literally i mean uh you don't need to do anything else i mean that's the first thing without that you don't have anything i mean even for example in resmo like we have all these class security checks and rules but really the most fundamental the most critical ones related to the im and uh you know things like for example you have to rotate uh i am user uh, passwords every 90 days or you know something like this yeah. and even there are like other best practices like probably you don't have even have to use i am users at all um so um that's you know um uh, that's the first thing for a security program so uh before uh you know during our preparation we talked uh, about four stages of uh you know building your yeah. actionable security program so that's the first one is visibility and you already uh, mentioned about it like uh, when we talk about the fundamentals that's so yeah. fundamental like that's wh why we are doing this you know uh, access management otherwise you can just give access and if you don't have visibility right you don't i mean why, why are we doing this at all i mean that's the first thing so you need visibility sure. you need uh, to identify um those you know access uh, yeah uh, patterns so the the next one is awareness uh, so we can talk about this, I think, in detail uh, is the next topic. Uh, and the third one is actually taking action, uh, yeah. you know, uh, on these, you know, findings uh, on these uh, changes in your system. And the, the following one, the, the next one is, uh, the last one is accountability. I mean, uh, why are we doing this? So let's talk about awareness. Uh, what do you think about awareness? I mean, again, the first one is visibility, but we already talked about this. So I want to just sure. uh, talk straight uh move straight to awareness part yeah okay I, i'm gonna i'm gonna do it like make a little bit faster mm -hmm. because like these these are the topics that yes we need to like identify it like everyone it like every uh, every one of them so the the, for the 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 second one is um the awareness awareness means like 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 make it visible also for you like not just ident like identity, just every maybe asset or related to that person or people, it doesn't matter. So, and also like inform someone 
like about before doing any action. Like it is, it is something like let's say you I want to like reset my password, maybe in five days, right? If I don't know to do yeah. reset my password in five days, when it's you know expired my password, I can log into the system, right? So mm -hmm. awareness means just knowing something before I do action. It is a simple explanation. Is it, is it clear, by the way? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's clear. I'm So maybe just talk a little bit about how it differs with visibility. So that's probably uh, the key part here because we mentioned visibility uh, and that's so similar. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's like it is a different concept. Like identify just only actually like identify or make making like visible something is it is contains like everything not just the identity itself it is making everything visible but awareness it is like something like combines rules like related to that visibility okay you see everything yeah i see everything but if i don't know what to do about that visibility it, it doesn't mean anything to me so I need to aware of something that I need to do. That's that's like the separation of between those concepts. Yeah. I mean, so like, okay. yeah, like like you. Can I continue to to yeah, like? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. The, the the third one is like taking an action, right? So you have the visibility and you have the awareness. So everything is okay. But so what will I do? Like, will I just okay? I'm aware of something is happening. So what will I do? I need to take action, right? I need to take action What it depends on that awareness. That's why awareness comes before taking action. I need to know something that what, what, what I need to do. And, and I, I can postpone that action, right? I can postpone it. I can say, or I can escalate that action. Maybe I don't want to take take an action, I can, I can say it to you, okay, Sarah, you have users, okay, this is ident like identifying, right, and invisibility, you have users, and I am saying that you need to aware of three of your users are accessing like some higher level assets, okay, you are aware of it, okay, so what do you need to do? Are you going to like keep them to do access to those like assets, maybe like you can just check it every like every day or every week or every month. So you, you need to do an, some some action about that. So this is the this is the taking action. Okay, you're just defining your action, and you, maybe you are creating an automation for that action. Okay, I'm gonna disable those users, or I'm gonna just not disable those users, but I'm gonna give them access just for certain times, not like every time they are trying to access to that resource. No, I, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just disable maybe the, those permissions, and I'm gonna give those permissions by their request. So this is this is like taking action. So the third one, sorry, the fourth one, is the most important one making you an making you accountable so it means accountability so accountability just actually kind of a mixing mixing subject because also people feel that being accountable being watched and like something like big brother is watching you or something else. no it's not big brother is watching you just your system making you accountable so let's say I actually, maybe we are talking about like disabling a user or, or just resetting some users per like password or something. Let's say you are in a company and you are just managing their Active Directory. And this is the base user source. And those users are accessing some system with those identities. That's, let's talk about, about the CEO's account. If I'm managing the Active Directory, if I'm the administrator of that Active Directory, I am the, I am the owner of the company, not the CEO, because I can just I can just manage or I can just reset, I can just unlock or lock any accounts in the system. 
that's a little bit scary. I I'm, I don't want like I'm not trying to make you like scared of something or giving a permission to your users. No. But someone gave me that permission, and I need to be accountable. If someone sued me about something or any action on the system, I need to say that just perfectly, not just verbally. And I need proof, right? Accountability making you like or creating a proof of that you didn't or you did that action. I'm saying that I didn't just reset, reset my CEO's password. You know why? Because you can just see my audit logs. You can just see everything. You gave, you gave me a permission, but you also just watching me, right? Or system watching me. And you can just check my audit logs. You don't need to just ask me anything about like anything. Just go to audit logs and I like search my user. Okay, Salchuk. Okay, oh, you didn't do that. But Serhat did that, right? So I can I can see that and I can say that. That's the accountability. Like tracking doesn't mean we micromanage or your, mm -hmm. your company micromanage. The tracking means also making you accountable of your actions. We are doing we are doing actions by their requests or by their or by our permissions or maybe for our daily job. That's mm -hmm. the that's the accountability that we are talking about. Yeah, that's that's super important because uh Again, being accountable uh, means you are responsible for something and you can prove it. That's super important. Again, uh, I mean, either way, these controls, these uh, policies, whatever you call them, has to be in place uh, you know, for a successful security program. So for example, just to give you an example, like uh, that's a similar concept to you know monofors you know doing identity on the identity side like doing all this you know recording all this stuff. I know you guys also can do great things like I mean even video record for certain actions like because sometimes for example you delete a company's account in your system or you take a like very critical action you need more than just the audit log right. So yeah. uh, let's say PAM use case I guess right. Yeah, PEM use case comes with uh, with recording a user's sessions or actions. Mm -hmm. um, sessions also meaning like act like the the the, the total of actions or maybe mm -hmm. like combined actions together. So your session includes maybe certain actions they just requested and you are doing that your your action, mm -hmm. and the system is recording your actions your session actions whatever it calls. So, mm -hmm. and after that, it's creating or or maybe creating a tags for that. Let's say you want to reset a user's password and I gave you permission while you are doing that. Project access management system just recording you and okay. And also just assigning some tags to that recordings and saying that, okay, that recording depends to that action maybe even even a software that you are using for your business management let's say someone is creating a request for that and for that request if someone approve that request i'm creating a session for your privilege action and st starting to record your action and after that after you finish your job i'm just attaching that maybe number of your request, identification of your request, attaching to that recording and saying that, okay, that action has been done by your employee with that recording. You can, if you suspect about something, you can watch the recording and you can see what happens while they're doing that job. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty important. So what we are doing, so we were we are talking with Satchuk and we are, you know, on the Resmo side, we integrate with a bunch of different tools, especially on the identity and access side. So we are developing an integration with OneAssign. So uh, what we see right now is a critical capability, you know, in terms of access. We are uh, recording all these uh, IAM actions, uh, access-related uh, actions on Monofor side. 
So sometimes you take action on uh, the other side as well, like on your cloud, on your SaaS, yeah. and there is a change. So yeah. what we are doing at Resmo, we record those changes and we detect those changes and we allow you to take action as well. And we are thinking of even like combining those two data together, like the um, the actual change, the user who is making the change uh, from the uh, IM side and combine the actual say change on the tool side, the cloud or SaaS side. And combining those two together will give uh, the IT or security teams a lot of power on, uh, especially during instant response, during auditing. Um, yeah. So I think that's super powerful uh, because uh, you get visibility, awareness, you get the ability to take action and you are actually accountable. So it combines those four critical uh, you know, uh, things we talked about when building your security program. Definitely. It's just complete, complete visibility, not just visibility and also like giving you power to take action because you're aware of something, you make it accountable and so on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I mean, so before we talk a little bit about some cloud security use cases, there is a good uh, question, fundamental question actually from Hakan. So uh, I want to direct that question to you. So what is the most challenging part implementing when implementing IAM I, I systems? Uh, I know you work with a lot of um, enterprise yeah. customers so uh you probably seen a lot of challenges so what is the number one thing the the, the basic problem about the identity access management system or implementing them to your environment that thinking complex at the first i'm always saying that you need to choose a part or choose a pain point that makes you so like troubled to do something the, the basic example for that, if you are like having a trouble to create a workflow for your newcomers, so you need to start with that, not the whole system itself, because you need to focus something and you need, you need to fix that problem. And after that, you need to, you need to go with other one. So the first thing, don't just think a complex for like your whole system, just Focus on one thing and, and create a time plan for that, for your whole system maybe, and create a good architecture, but not at the first time, just plan it. And next, do that action day by day. Do not try to do everything at once because we know that it is impossible. If you try to do that, 100%, your project will fail. You can be sure about that. When we reach the customer and say that, okay, Mr. Customer, what is your problem? And customer said, I have like a bunch of pr problems and I'm redirect, re redirecting that question to them again. Okay, I don't, I don't want to hear your all problems at once. Just give me a challenge. The just ultimate problem that you are challenging with at the moment. And let's try to fix it at first, because those identity access management projects, not easy projects that you can fix in maybe one month. It takes months and months. Sometimes it takes a, a year to just fix everything or maybe two years. So what do you do? Just, just create a time plan, just focus one thing day by day. Okay, so as far as I understand, the uh, I mean the most challenging part is the complexity, right? Uh, because yeah. it's so complex. I mean, you need to divide and conquer. Uh, that's that's actually a like fundamental concept in many cases. I mean, even if you are Definitely. doing cloud security, for example, there are hundred different things you can focus on, but do uh, you define the most like uh, critical one for you? Um, sometimes there are guidelines actually, like if you don't know where to start. So sometimes you don't know where to start. There are guideline, guidelines like benchmarks, for example, that, that yeah. can help you, you know, that, that can guide you uh, to focus on um, certain things like CIS benchmarks. I mean, they have identity and access management section so that they tell you, I mean, you need to first fix those 10 things, but there are probably other like medium or low uh, critical stuff that you can fix, but you know, just focus on this stuff first. So that's actually uh, one of the uh, 
you know, uh, questions coming from my customers as well. I know, you know, you, I have all these rules, you know, failing. So where do I start? That's when we tell them, I mean, you can focus on like these CIS benchmarks or you can just filter those rules, uh, you know, based on criticality and just focus on the high critical ones. Yeah, right. Uh, so uh, the, I, so we have about uh, 10 minutes. So I want to talk about uh, some cloud use cases before we finish. So uh, how do we start, you know, with security on cloud? So uh, I, I think we, we can just, you know, talk about some generic stuff as well. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's also okay to talk about some uh, Amazon Web Services specific stuff too. If, you know, yeah. uh, if we do, I think that would also be familiar for many. So. Yeah, the, the first one is the, the basic one. Start with like identity first. Identity first means like just create a system that depends to your systems. It means like identity management and single sign on together. So look for an option about managing or like console, consolidate your user's database at first. The database means of course, identity access management itself again. So create a user source for you at the first and just connect your user source with that system. For the AWS cases, AWS uh, just support this option. They're giving you like OIDC connects, SAML connection like together. You can just use one of them to like connect your identity access management system and allow them to access to your environment at the first time. That comes first. So the other one is, of course, just use multi-factor authentication to secure your users' accounts because they're, they're accessing a crucial system. It can just take you down maybe in seconds. Just click the button, boom, just you lose maybe everything, right? So the, what it comes like, just, I, I actually, I want to like give, uh, maybe like, is it is it allowed or not? I don't know, but it is private at the moment. Uh, so yeah. you know the Twitter case, right? Like they just access the Twitter servers. Because, I'm not sure. No. Because you, you it, it, in maybe like two years ago or one and a half years ago, mm -hmm. one of the Twitter engineers, uh, they actually just did social engineering. But it means like, you know, uh, do the social engineering to access their accounts. The problem is that user, actually employee, accessing a server without multi-factor authentication. And that server is the database server itself. So the like crucial server, right? So he just accessed right away. I did like social engineering and solar accounts and also like try to try to like you know, skip the multi-factor authentication and access the server itself. So they did like Bitcoin, you know, fraud on the like most famous accounts and they sold like maybe $15 million. I, I don't remember the money, but money itself is not important. They lose their accountability. They lose their trust. They, they lose their privacy on the like like user side i'm using twitter okay yeah everyone use it use use twitter but you know like they just they just do, skip to just certain action they need to do they just skip that action and what it happens like 15 million dollars 50 million dollars stolen and users just just got their trust to that system, yeah. And same with uh, same with uh, uh, Uber's. So Uber got hacked too. You know how? Let's say um, I am a user administrat administrative users and working at Uber's itself. So they they got hacked because of their multi-factor authentication. They're using an identity access management and they still get hacked. Why? Because they send a push notification. They stole their accounts and password, and they send a push notification at the time of the midnight. And they are, I mean, the, the guy was sleeping. 
it's like 3 a.m. or something. And I, he's getting a push notification to his mobile again, again, and again, 10 times, 12 times. And he just like wanted to make it stop. And he, he just approved the push notification and that user got access to their their administrative accounts and they they stole their data easily and they didn't like did i actually they didn't do a certain action they needed to to do so what important is do the certain action you need to do at first those actions need to be done before you move forward I can say the like second one. The third one is the governance. And the fourth one is the privilege management. So governance means, like I said before, so govern everything after you gave permission, you gave role or, or gave access to that user, just govern every week, maybe every month, it doesn't matter. Just create a time, time plan for that. The fourth one is the privilege. Make your users accountable. Make your, make your like privilege account, account accounts visible and rotate their passwords, rotate their permissions, rotate their roles. Just give maybe random number to ask their, their maybe like now knowing factors, just device factors, just like, like use or create a secure environment for your users, not the users itself. Users can just give their like critical information to to anyone easily. It, it's it's easy. Like many of people are using their birth dates, child's like counts, or child's first name and last name, or their ages in their passwords. It is it is like easily, you know, guessable, right? So just you like create a good password and multi-factor authentication management and create a strong policy, but don't make their life miserable. Because when you create a secure environment, it comes different concepts and it makes your life miserable. We don't want to do that. We need to like make their life easy and make their account secure. And there is a way for that, right? So just, just pick a good one good identity access management system, good privilege access management system, modern identity access and privilege access management system. It is not, yes, easy job, but it is easy job to buy done by your users. Make it uh, secure, make it just simplified for them, not, not complex. Because people await complex things. You know that. Mm -hmm. If I yeah. create a password policy for you, like a thousand, characters or letters, lowercase, uppercase, and numbers, even the special characters. I made you to think simply or like, like stupid. You need to like find a way to await this because you don't want to like, you know, do the complex thing because you just want to do your job. Yeah. That's so I want mean. to I, I want to add one thing before I uh, ask you Hakan's question. I think that's relevant to what you said the latest. So I don't want to uh, you know um, uh, talk a lot. Uh, but so I I only want to add so uh, about the cloud. So I think if you go a bit back, first mm -hmm. you definitely need to understand the shared responsibility model. So that's yeah. not related to just specific to AWS. I think that's Related no. to pretty much every uh, SaaS or cloud-based business, but yeah. you know AWS puts a lot of importance in, into this concept because Definitely. you need to. Uh, they give you tools to be able to secure your environment. But you need to definitely understand uh, where your role actually starts, like uh, which 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 parts are AWS's or other cloud providers, GCPs, other business they are responsible for, and which ones you are responsible for. Then you can actually start, you know, thinking about those stuff because they give you the tools. But if you misuse them, you are vulnerable. So um, that's the only thing I want to talk about because you know access is so fundamental. But even before that, you need to understand what you are responsible for if you are talking about the cloud, especially. Uh, so uh, uh, let's 
talk a little bit about Hakan's question and then we will uh, close the session. Uh, we are almost out of time. So Hakan sure. mentioned, you know, there are a lot of uh, IM and SaaS solutions popular in the area like Okta, Ping, some others. Uh, Monosign is a good one too. Uh, but some of them uh, have some security weaknesses, right? We have heard actually, I mean, Okta's, for example, uh, famous security uh yeah vulnerability yeah. issue latest i mean so it, it made a lot of noise because it's so critical to their you know uh to their users a weakness in okta you know means if you know a huge security problem for all their customers so what do you think about that like uh i mean so in my mind uh because i come from like uh you know i worked at obscene uh, a lot i mean uh for a long time is yeah. there is no way to avoid incidents right uh but there yeah. are certain things you can do obviously but there's no way to avoid them so uh, what do you think about this like how should we approach uh you know integrating these tools into our system when those things happen or, or even like how we can avoid on our side to to you know uh to become vulnerable at least i mean how how, how should we approach this it is a really hard question yeah, I, I don't, I don't really like know like which answer that I need to do. But I'm gonna start to good one. One of my friend comes to me and said like, Sajuk, everyone will be hacked in one day. I don't know when when is the day, but everyone will be hacked. And actually, I'm not one hundred percent agree with him. But I agree what what he means. He is trying to say people, I mean, if if there is a people in something, it is, I mean, someone can like stole your stole your everything, maybe almost everything, because it depends on the people's something. So what I'm what I'm trying to say is don't like make them trustable like create a system that needs to be trustable if you trust the system if you create a create a good system that covers your processes covers your systems identities assets management and make you like aware of something and like make it you to actionable to on like any anything or something so the, the the only way that we can await some kind of situation like like octas or any other systems maybe like lastpass we can also talk about lastpass they're password managers and they just stole their data i mean they got their data got stolen it is they are the security guy they know how to do security but they are missing some some concepts not because they don't know they're just missing maybe they're so complex so just try to make it simplified that's the first one not complex but trustable the the other one is don't trust other one's data or don't, don't trust other one's manageability so if even your data has been stolen you need to be the owner of the data so there are tons of systems comes with um, security option that encrypt your every data on your environment. Let's say you have a SaaS solution like Resmo, right? So you're just keeping your, your customers' uh, critical data, right? So you need to encrypt that data by your customers' unique of something. You can call it master key. You can say protection key. You can say installation ID. It doesn't matter what it means. You need to just encrypt your critical data. Not everything, of course, but the critical ones. So even you got stolen, I mean, the, your, your data got stolen, you don't expose your customer's data, right? Because your customer has that data actually master key. Of, of the data that you keep on your environment. So that's the that's the most important important one. Just pick a good product or if you have the power about that 
just create an on-premise environment if you are able to do so. Not everything again, not everything. At least your user source or at least your project access management gateways, not the gateway itself, but the, the gateway, sorry, not the system itself, the gateway that are accessing to your critical data. If you just, just create a secure environment for your critical critical data or, or part of your data or APIs or applications. So it, yeah, even though maybe you can be hacked, but even you got stolen or your data is stolen, they don't understand what it means on your data because you have the, the, the master key of your data. Yeah, yeah. I mean, thanks a lot for the, all the details. So I, I don't wanna, uh, so we are out of time. So uh, yeah. there are no other questions. So uh, let's just call it a day. And yeah. uh, we talked a lot about, uh, you know, the fundamentals of identity and access management, how it relates to your security program, the fundamentals, like, because again, access is so fundamental to your, uh, you know, security. We also talked about some cloud use cases. I think we can in the future, if you are interested folks, uh, if you let us know, we can go deeper into cloud and even share some slides and go through some use cases mm -hmm. instead of just talking about this stuff. And we could just open, um, you know, MonoSign and, you know, show you guys how uh, you can connect your AWS accounts and things like that. So those will be interesting, I would say. Um, so we can do those things as well. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us today. Uh, and thanks a lot, Sarchip, for, you know, spending your evening with me. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me, Sarah. Of course. I mean, uh, see you guys in another webinar. Uh, have a great night.